My name's Mark Goff. This is my son, Cameron Goff. My parents are Richard and Diane Goff. Their owner is also the uh, turkey farm operation. Um, the farm name's Goff Farms. Mike Christensen, Fly and Sea Farms. Uh, I'm Walter Lout with Jace Mountain Pork. I'm a co-owner with my two brothers. We raise turkeys. Um, at one time, our average uh, bird count on the farm is about uh, 30,000. Uh, we're a 3,600 sow furrow to wean operation in southeast Missouri. We're raising palm turkeys. We have four finishing barns and we have a starter barn. Starter barn is uh, 24,000 birds and then the four finishing barns is equivalent to 24,000. Um, Jace Mountain has been in production a little over two years, um, but we've been raising hogs in my family since the late 60s. Well, we started the starter barn in 2008, and 2010 we built our first two finishers, and then 2013 we finished up with our other two finishing barns. Uh, Dad started when I was 12, so I came and uh, took over from him and since 86 I guess is when we started so uh, been doing it now for you know coming up on 30 a little over 30 years now oh I don't know down down in the teens you know we've been below that uh, but I'd say around the 20s and 30s is what we experience a lot during the winter time um, we're not real cold, we're pretty temperate. Um, we do get down in the teens and you know, but most of the time it's freezings, your, your lows in the evenings and that, maybe in the high 20s. So that's, that's about as cool as we get. Uh, well, I know just last year, uh, I think there was a Sunday morning we got down to negative 25 for uh, temperature, you know, and uh, I would say, you know, Throughout the winter, at some point, you hit a negative 20 or or so. That, that's the coldest it'll get, you know. And there's uh, sometimes, you know, I know I just talked to Dad here a week ago or so, and he's like, you remember when he farmed? There was 40 days where it never got the high, never got above zero uh, degrees Fahrenheit. So um, that it, it can be cold for quite a while, and we're pretty flat out here. So you know, the wind is a is a con. The wind wind chill is more of an issue for us than sometimes temperature, but uh, they go together. No, uh, it's it's rolled pretty well. It, it slows down just a little bit. You know, I'm not going to say it's as consistent as, as in summer, but uh, nothing that's stopped production with it or stopped using it. Well, if everything's running fine, you can you're probably only 20 or 30 degrees less than summer. You know, once if you've got that thing running good, you know, you're still over 140 a lot of times in the winter. You know, it's when you start getting down to to 90 that if you don't catch that fast enough that uh, she'll end up going down even farther. You know, I've had it when we first got it, you know, we've had it freeze up on us once, you know, to where she went down to 30, and we ended up getting it going again just by putting in because, uh, you know, animals, when you put the, the bird in there with the litter on the beginning and you let it set, it will start creating its own heat even without you doing anything. Then you start slowly turning it again until you get it to go, and she ended up coming out in the middle of winter. We got it back up to temperature even after it got froze down one time, and. Uh, that was uh, a learning curve we started off with at first. So, um, I was just, since I do not have my building up yet, I was glad we didn't have to deal with ice and a lot of snow. I could see where that would, you know, be a problem. But, uh, no, we got along, we got along real good with it. But, uh, yeah, the, the composter for us is, uh, you know, we've had it enough for enough years and and now, now of course, that we spent enough years doing it and we understand how to run it, now it'd be, uh, for a while there, you're kind of like, did I do the right thing when you're trying to struggle to understand it and uh, get it to run and operate. But now that we've got it running good, I, I don't think we'll ever get rid of it. I would, I would recommend it. Um, I guess we're, we've been happy with the decision we've made and um, there's just, it takes a while, but we're, I'm going to refer back to the building and getting the, the roof over the top and um, with us having the ability to use the 
starter litter, I want to implement a couple conveyors to be able to add the litter to the drum. I would say that's probably the, the biggest thing is making sure we get the litter added to the drum and not make a mess out of it. We want to get that part of it cleaned up so it's easier for the employee or ourselves. But uh, I'd highly recommend the drum. I think it does a good job. Oh, absolutely. We have people go through our farm and that's when I do show them the eco drum if they're interested at all because it's, it's worked really well. I, I'm a big, the rotary composters are the only way to go. <laughs>